Hello, everybody, and welcome to Haiku Talk. I'm your host, Ben Ga, your friendly neighborhood haiku poet. And today we're going to be taking a look at a piece from the latest issue of Blythe Spirit. That would be volume 34, number three. A poem from Janice Doppler with the first line of Mountain Stream. Okay, with that said, you know what time it is. Time to sit back, relax, grab yourself a tasty beverage, and let's haiku. Welcome back, everybody. It's good to be with you again for another episode of Haiku Talk. And let's get right to the poem, shall we? Again, this comes from the latest issue of Blythe Spirit from poet Janice Doppler. And the poem goes like this. Mountain stream in a still place nibbling minnows. Mountain stream, in a still place, nibbling minnows. Mm, mm, mm. Love it, love it, love it. And I love this piece because it gets to one of these things that haiku does in particularly well. And that is by bringing visibility and by paying attention and bringing a focus on something very small, very subtle, that if you are moving too fast in life, you will completely miss. And these poems give us permission to stop everything that we're doing, take pause, and take notice. Mountain stream in a still place nibbling minnows. Come on, right? That's the heart of this. Uh, the poem, I'm just going to start talking about it, and we'll get to the line structure in a bit. It is that essence of, of what it means to stay, just to, to, to slow down, to stop at a mountain stream. First of all, to get out into nature, get, oh, get away from everything else to see a mountain stream in this case. Or it could be any kind of stream. But in this case, we're out away from things. We're in a, looking at a mountain stream. And we're not just looking at the mountain stream. We're there looking long enough that we're looking past the rushing water, looking past the scenery, looking past how this, this mountain stream fits in the landscape. We've, sit in, we've, we've sat here long enough observing the river that we notice that there are pots of stillness, parts of stillness in this, in this stream. And in these parts where the stream is still, we've not only noticed them, but we notice that there are fish there. There are minnows present. And so you really have to be paying attention because if you're not looking, if you're not calm, these fish do blend in very well with, with what's going on above, below them. They're very easy to miss. But when you stop, take pause, and watch, and look, and really pay attention, you see things. And not only do you, are we able to identify that there are fish, we can identify what type of fish is here, a minnow, and we can, we can see what they're doing. They're nibbling, they're feeding in this still spot in the current, in the mountain stream. Hmm. And that is, if you, that is a whole lot of being present, slowing down, and being in the moment. 
And if you don't have the opportunity to do this yourself in your own busy life, taking pause at a poem like this, that's gentle, that's not full of trickery, that's not burdened with a lot of heaviness of big philosophical questions or uh, emotional um, weight to it, which are all wonderful things. I'm not knocking any, any other kinds of poems or any types of haiku. But this gives you pause. This can be your respite, encountering a poem like this. And if you're lucky enough to be able to get away into nature in your life um, from the busyness of the day-to-day and sit out in a hammock under a tree or go sit on a rock by a, lo- by a, a pond in a park where you can quiet your mind and sit and observe. You will notice moments like this. These, this type of poem will resonate with you because you will have experienced this type of thing yourself. You know, sitting out in a chair in your own backyard, if you have one, long enough and being still enough and quiet enough that all the wildlife around you starts to come back. It doesn't see you as a threat. The rabbits come back close to your feet. The birds are about. The squirrels running around. They no longer see you as a threat because you've become part of the landscape and you're no longer driving things away. And this poem oof, just does this, man. Uh, I, I'm so, my senses are so engaged with this. Uh, the sights, the sounds, the smells. You know, you know put yourself at a mountain stream. If you've been to one in your life, go there. Uh, If you've never been to one in your life, imagine what it would be like. And now imagine being at that mountain stream, which is the first line of the poem, mountain stream, mountain stream. Engage your senses, go there, see this. Feel the air around you. Hear what that that stream sounds like. Put yourself in a time of year. What kind of clothes are you wearing? What kind of scent is in the air? And then quiet down even further and look at that mountain stream. Look at it and find the still places. Find a still place in that stream. Line two is in a still place, in a still place. And then after you focus even more or being calm, quiet, still, even more, you become still like that still place. And then you see the fish, the little minnows, and you notice that they're that they're they're doing something. They're not just there to see. They're there living their lives. They're nibbling, they're feeding on things floating down through the current of this mountain stream. And just pause there for a while. Watch these minnows. Feel the air around you. Hear that. Hear the the currents, the stream moving over rocks. Hear that maybe there's birds in the air. Imagine everything else around you. And then look back to those minnows. And what a gift. And what a gift this poem is. And what a moment that we get to share and step into and complete in our minds with this poem. Um, When I'm uh, at work... In the office, I'm still not going to the office uh, every day uh, post-pandemic. But when I do go in the office, I, I will eat my lunch while I'm at my desk while I'm working, and then I'll take my lunch break. And I, I live, uh, I work not too far away from Forest Park in St. Louis. So I will take that lunch break, I'll drive there, and I'll go and I'll sit on a rock. And, and I have my spots in the park because there's 
streams flowing through the, through the park. And one of my favorite things to do is sit there and just sit long enough to where I can start to see the fish. This little bluegill and little sunfish and all sorts of other little types of little things swimming around in there. Eventually I'll see a turtle, maybe pop its head up, go back down. A little bit later I'll see it at another little spot, pop up, go back down. And all these birds flying around, some red wing blackbirds and all sorts of stuff. Swifts flying through the air. And it's just a beautiful break, a pause from the busy work day, reminding me that there is more to this world than whatever stresses I have back at the office. And it's such a refreshing mind cleanse because everything that I'm observing, all of the, the fish, the ducks, the geese, the birds, the turtles, the, everything is there in its own world, doing what it does, completely oblivious to me especially after I've settled in in my own stillness. They no longer care that I'm there. And to be around and surrounded by all of these different creatures in a natural environment that they're doing what they do, you know? Whether I'm there to observe them or not, they're living their lives, doing their thing. And there's something really uh, humbling as well as centering about that. Just to know that all of this, you know, I, I'm, there's a whole other world out there doing its thing that has completely nothing to do with, this, like I said, the stresses of what I'm going through or the, the, the meeting schedules, the deadlines, whatever. And it's just very refreshing. This poem resonates with me on that. It, it's that kind of like taking me out of my day-to-day -day life and putting me someplace where I'm going to enjoy Forget about everything but where I am. Be alive in the moment and see, what's, see what I can see when I slow down. So Janice Doppler, thank you for capturing this moment. Thank you for taking me to this place. And thank you for tuning in. And hopefully you, you've enjoyed going to this little space yourselves. Um, when you are working on your own work, you know, just re remember that there is nothing that's too big or nothing that's too small to, to be important. To, to have what uh, Scott Mason would call wonder to it. Uh, to find wonder in the world. And mm, that's why we're here. <sighs> all right. That wraps up another episode of Haiku Talk. Thank you all for tuning in. And uh, until next time, find your own little stillness in the river. Peace. That's good.